Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Greetings one and all and welcome to another Deckard Games YouTube um, modern GPU thing. It is, well, it's been a while since uh, I've done um, one of these. Today we have a, um, another contemporary GPU thing, that being the ASUS Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 4070 Ti. So uh, yeah, it is a uh, new GPU from uh, NVIDIA. This is the OC Edition 12GB of GDDR6X. So uh, we are going to uh, check it out right at the front. You can see that, well, we have some uh, sweet DLSS3, ray tracing, reflex, and uh, the NVIDIA Studio kind of thing. Looking at the back of the box, we have some uh, publicity stuff featuring the uh, cooling system from the uh, card itself by... Uh, ASUS DisplayPort and uh, HDMI. This has DisplayPort uh, 1.4A, which goes up to uh, 4K 24 Hz or 8K at uh, 60 Hz. And we have your uh, typical uh, jibber jabber about uh, cutting edge GPUs, realistic and immersive graphics, AI accelerated performance, game winning responsiveness, whatever that means, your, your usual stuff. And of course, since everything nowadays features RGB, it is indeed compatible with the ASUS Aura Sync, the uh, ASUS RGB software. So yeah, let's uh, open this thing. Opening the box reveals, as usual, another box. In this case, a uh, very black. Yeah, it looks... It has a emboss finish to it. It is kind of cool with the uh, Tough Gaming logo in there. So uh, yeah, a box inside the box. Uh, on the other side, well, we have nothing. So yeah, I uh, I think I enjoyed this box more than the uh, outer box. And uh, opening the uh, second box reveals the card. And of course, we also have a is this a Velcro tie? Yes, it is. A Velcro uh, tie, not to be confused with TI or uh, tie, but it is a Velcro tie <laughs> from the uh, Tough Gaming series of uh, stuff, which will go in there. We also have, of course, your um, high power cable, which uh, uses two PCIe power connectors. We also have something in here. Ah, this is a GPU stand. So elegant. So, <laughs> man. Oh, it's open. Let's. Ah, oh, man. Look at that. Ah. Oh. Does this come up? Oh, yes, it does. And it has a ruler. Oh. Uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, this is cool. I kind of enjoy it. So yeah, you can put it in there, and adjust the height, and uh. Ah. Simple design, but probably effective. Ah, this is cool. Again, little touches like this when you pay this uh, amount of money for a GPU. Yeah, might as well uh, give you something else. We have the card in here. We have some uh, documentation, which is uh, heavy. If you follow my channel, you know, or you would know that uh, I love paper. What the crap does this open? I don't want to tear this apart. Ah, there you go. You gotta be careful. And this is... Is this a stand? Oh my god. I think this is a stand. Yeah. Thank you for purchasing an ASUS GPU. I believe this is a stand. Yeah, that you can uh, take, take it out of here and uh, do something with it. As always, uh, ASUS sends you... A, I don't know, is this a, co a collector's card? don't really know what this is for, but sure. Warranty paper. Awesome. Ah, instructions on the graphics card holder. I guess uh, we don't need that. We figured it out by ourselves. Certificate of reliability for capacity and chokers. Okay. That's, uh, that's a new one for me. Well, how to use your uh, high power... Uh, Cable 
and the uh, quick start guide with a lot of pages because well it has a uh, or better it is multi-language so yeah some uh, nice packaging i uh, i mean i don't know what to make of this so uh, sure let's take a closer look at the card so uh, here we have the uh, card itself on in its protective anti-static bag which by uh, removing the bag reveals the card which is quite thick this is probably three slots and uh, a third maybe there you go in the front of the card it features three cooling fans it also has some uh, tough gaming logos some jibber jabber over here this uh, these are some coordinates probably to something i don't know the top of the card which faces you when it's plugged horizontally again the tough gaming the logo geforce rtx this is probably rgb the uh, back of the card again with some uh, mesh thingy going on a very clean aesthetics with a warning to please remove the uh, protective film before use so yeah there you go your uh, power connector we have uh, hdmi and uh, display ports so we have two hdmi and three display ports so uh, yeah i think that's pretty much it this is is it metal i think it is yeah this is metal the back side is also metal obviously so uh, sure we gotta put this into um, a machine and uh, well run some uh, benchmarks and get some numbers because well that's what you gotta do As usual we are going to take a look at the series of games in three resolutions 1080p 1440p and 4k green graphs mean of course nvidia gpus red ones are amd and you gotta look for the blue graph which uh, is the gpu that we are testing in this video and let's kick things off with borderlands 3 at 1080p which is known to be an uh, amd title the rtx 4070 ti gets an average of 187.5 frames per second and 110 1% lows. Scaling to 1440p, the RTX 4070 Ti gets an average of 139 frames per second and 108 1% lows. Scaling up again, this time to 4K, the RTX 4070 Ti gets an average of 75 frames per second, so above the uh, 60 frames per second limit and 64 1% lows. The next game on the list is Control, a game which used to showcase Nvidia's RTX technology or ray tracing. At 1080p ultra settings, we get an average of 239 frames per second, which is not playable at all. Scaling to 1440p, frames drop to 137 frames per second on average, and 106 1% lows. Scaling up again to 4K, control gets 67 frames per second on average and 58 1% lows. Next game on the list is Cyberpunk 2077. At 1080p, we get 161 frames per second on average and 75 1% lows. Scaling to 1440p, the average drops to 112 frames per second and 75 1% lows. Scaling up Cyberpunk to 4K, we get an average of 54 frames per second and 44 1% lows. Next we have Death Stranding at 1080p, the RTX 4070 Ti gets an average of 192 frames per second and 160 1% lows. Scaling up to 1440p, the RTX 4070 Ti gets 181 frames per second on average and 160 1% lows. Scaling up again to 4K, the RTX 4070 Ti gets 111 
frames per second on average, which is a cool number, and uh, 99 1% lows. Next game on the list we have uh, Doom Eternal, running uh, the Vulcan API, a game which you can play on your smartwatch. At 1080p we get uh, 539 frames per second on average, and 240 1% lows. Scaling up to 1440p, Doom Eternal gets 403 frames per second on average, and 248 1% lows. Scaling up again to 4K, Doom Eternal gets 212 frames per second on average, and 146 1% lows. Again, Doom, uh, well, simply runs on everything. Next game is GTA V, the only DirectX 11 game on the list. At 1080p we get 190 frames per second on average, and 6 1% lows because, well, in my experience, uh, NVIDIA cards are a little fanicky with the GTA V engine, but, uh, well, scaling up to 1440p, numbers drop to 170 frames per second on average, and 4.81% lows, uh, because, again, numbers are all over the place with, uh, with this game. Scaling up again to 4K, numbers go up an average of uh, 180 frames per second, and uh, 84 1% lows again, it is just weird all over the board. Next game is Horizon Zero Dawn, at 1080p we get an average of 199 frames per second, and 127 1% lows. Scaling up to 1440p, the RTX 4070 Ti gets an average of 165 frames per second, and 104 1% lows. Going up to 4K, the RTX 4070 Ti gets an average of uh, 90 frames per second and uh, 61 1% lows. Next game is Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, DirectX 12, we get an average of 286 frames per second and 169 1% lows. Going up to 1440p, the RTX 4070 Ti gets an average of 214 frames per second and 155 1% lows. Going up again to 4K, the RTX 4070 Ti gets an average of 116 frames per second and 92 1% lows. Next we have some numbers about ray tracing. Well, uh, I only do 4K while testing ray tracing because I believe that if you want to use RT, you should go 4K, you should go all out on your GPU. And Cyberpunk 2077 with uh, RTX Low gets an average of uh, 49 frames per second, dropping from the uh, 53, that's uh, less 7% frames per second. With RTX set to uh, medium, we get an average of uh, 44 frames per second, which is uh, less 16% frames per second. And finally, with RTX High, we get an average of uh, 40 frames per second, which is 38% uh, less performance, so uh, it's quite significant. Next ray tracing game on the list is Control, again, a game which was a showcase for ray tracing. Without it, we got an average of uh, 66 frames per second, and with RTX Medium, those frames dropped to uh, 52.5, and uh, with RTX High, we dropped to uh, 37 frames per second on average. Another ray tracing game, F1 2022 at 4K, of course, with RTX off, we get an average of 185 frames per second, and with RTX on, this game doesn't have medium or high, it's just on or off, we get 115 frames per second on average. Finally, we get 3D Mark Time Spy, because why not, it is a um, GPU benchmark. At 1080p, graphics test 1 and 2, we get 218 frames per second on average and 187. Scaling the test to 1440p, we get an average of 148 frames per second and 129 on uh, test 2. And scaling up again to 4K, we get 70 frames per second on average on test 1 and 66 frames per second on average on test 2. Next, we have a quick chart about thermals, the GPU temperature, the GPU hotspot, and the uh, RAM or VRAM temperature. All these numbers were obtained while benchmarking all the games that you just saw. And the uh, all-round uh, GPU temperature sets at a minimum of uh, 32 degrees Celsius and at a maximum of uh, 67, while the RAM has a minimum of uh, 38 and a maximum of uh, 68. And the GPU hotspot has a minimum of 42 degrees and a maximum 
of uh, 80, which, uh, well, these numbers are all within specs. Final chart is about power consumption and some uh, clock frequency. We also have some uh, fan RPMs in there, because why not? The fans do have a stop mode. The fan speed ranges from zero, it does have fan stop, to uh, 140, 50 RPMs, let's uh, call it that. While the GPU clock goes from 210 MHz in uh, idle to 2775 MHz. And uh, on this frequency, the card is pulling around 280 watts. Well, and there you go, the um, ASUS Stuff Gaming GeForce RTX 470 Ti 12GB OC Edition. Well, if the card isn't big enough, the name, uh, well, it is. And, uh, well, usually on these videos I'm not trying to attempt to recommend card A or card B. I just uh, show you the numbers and you uh, make of them what you want, what you will, because uh, what is expensive to person A may not be expensive to person B. So I usually don't talk about the um, expensiveness. Is this a word, expensiveness? Of something. I have my opinion, of course. Do I consider GPUs uh, overpriced nowadays? Yes, I do. Do I consider NVIDIA even more overpriced? Yes. I also do, but um, again, make of it what you will. I like the aesthetics, I really enjoy the um, shroud on this GPU. It's one of the most, uh, well, again, my opinion, beautiful shrouds that I've seen, that I've come across with, because the fin stack has a uh, curvature, it's on an angle, so you don't see the, the fin stacks right on the edge of the, um, of the card, and it's all filled with angles and whatnot. I uh, absolutely hate the NVIDIA iPower uh, adapter cable because, well, they claim it's for saving some uh, space on the PCB. <laughs> sure, if you want to save, uh, I don't know, one centimeter, one and a half centimeters, sure, go ahead. Uh, I don't like that freaking cable, but uh, again, things are what they are. So, yeah. This was the uh, ASUS, again, Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 4070 Ti OC Edition review. If you enjoy this video, leave it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because your support is always and very much appreciated. I have a lot more videos on uh, GPUs, so check those if you will, and I have more coming up. You can follow me on social media if you want to. If you don't want to, don't follow me on social media. As always, thank you very much for watching this. Until my next video, please do, as always, take care.